Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRN AM for Thursday, January 25th, 2024. And our top story today, election preview. Where does the retirement regulatory and legislative agenda stand in 2024? And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Jennifer Flitton is the head of government relations for Invesco. Jen, always great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be exciting. We're going to do a, a lot of conversation around retirement, retirement related issues. We're going to go all over the place. But I want to start off, I'm not sure if you heard it's an election year in 2024, uh, Congress, Senate, or third of the Senate, presidency. And uh, start off by asking where do retirement and retirement related issues stand um, in terms of Congress's priorities? Well, I think we've seen Congress, actually in the last two Congresses, really hone in and focus on retirement and tax and savings. And we saw that with the first Secure 1.0 under the Trump administration, and then again, Secure 2.0 under the Biden administration. Um, these conversations in Congress are ongoing. And the fact that uh, there's still more to be done and there's still really interesting ideas coming from both sides of the aisle, I think it will stay relevant uh, as we enter into 2024. But the reality is a general election is going to take up uh, most of the time and attention of not just Congress, but in the minds of the American people. Yep, it's going to suck a lot of oxygen out of that retirement agenda, potentially. Uh, I want to ask you about Social Security and Medicare. A lot of talk over the last couple of years about insolvency, some of the financial challenges. Is that, does that remain? I know, and I know that's the third rail, at least Social Security is the third rail of American politics. But is that at the top of the priority for the Congress and uh, the White House? I think over the next decade, the answer is yes. Okay, so we're facing this uh, insolvency issue come 2035, possibly as early as 2034, according to the trustees' um, current actuarial uh, numbers. And that could mean a 23% decrease in payment to seniors. That is um, not palpable, right? Uh, and it's it's not something that will um, sit well with Congresses in the future. So you're starting to have senators, mostly senators, because they have longer periods of time between their elections, really start to dig in and try to understand amongst them on both sides of the aisle, what is what could be on the table to put Social Security back on a trajectory of solvency. And so those conversations are going to develop. Uh, those debates will happen over the next several years. Do I expect it to be a big part of this general election from the right or the left? To your point, it's the third rail of politics, and it doesn't sit well in general election. Um, you've seen a little bit coming from the Republican primary candidates wanting to talk about debt and deficits and the trajectory of some of our entire entitlement spending. But I don't expect that to be part of the, the general election discussion. Senator Cardin is retiring at the end of his term. And uh, we saw Senator Portman retire previously. Who's going to be the champion of retirement and retirement related issues? I think you know, I'm thinking about that Bonnie Tyler song, I Need a Hero. So I think we need a hero who's going to step up and be champion for those issues. Well, to your point, I think after Senator Portman's retirement, I think um, uh, Senator Cassidy has has stepped well into those shoes. He's really taken up the retirement mantle, introduced legislation, bipartisan legislation, which um, Tim Kaine has been a good partner on on the Democratic side of the aisle. Um, you know, once there uh we, we start to see it's sort of the the discussion and maybe some draft language on um the framework of a 3.0 or whatever you want to call the next uh retirement reform bill i think you'll see a number of folks step in on the senate side uh i think richie neal in in the house still is sort of the sweetheart of the retirement community in the industry um, we'll see Mike Kelly and others on the right in the in the Ways and Means Committee, I think, step into that role should there be a partner in whatever is the next stage of retirement reform. Yeah. And, and you brought up Secure 3.0. I was going to say, do we dare even talk about that? But given that it's an election year and there's some different priorities and working on a budget and all those kind of things, 
What's the likelihood that we get any type of retirement legislation through the House, Senate, to the White House in 2024? I don't see a high likelihood of reaching another large bipartisan package. I do think you'll see draft legislation. I think we will see, and we already are seeing proposals, legislative proposals coming out that could be part of whatever comes next. But I think we're in that sausage making side of things, right? It's going to move a little slower. The conversations will be mostly behind the scenes, um, but we're setting up for a either a new administration or the next term of the current administration. And I think in either one, whether it's, you know, is it going to be Donald Trump on, on um, the Republican ticket? Is it going to be um, Joe Biden, most likely, on the Democratic ticket? Both would essentially be lame duck, right? This would be the last term of, of each. And there's a really good opportunity there to do bipartisan work in a situation like that. Yeah, well, it's certainly going to be interesting. Jen, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we're going to do a bit of a lightning round. There's so much more to talk about, and you're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Jennifer Flitton of Invesco. Jen, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And, and, and you have agreed to do a bit of a lightning round. This is a first for BRN. I, you know, we're going to hit a couple of different or several different topics because there's so much going on. The first one I want to start off with is retirement access. And there's been a lot of work done at the state level, uh, state auto IRA programs, Oregon, California, I can't name them all because I don't remember them all and I don't have enough fingers. Um, but what about federal legislation, Jen? Where, where does that stand? And well, there has been federal legislation introduced. Um, it's uh, Sen Senator Higginlooper uh, in the Senate with Senator Tillis uh, and there's a House companion version. Um, I think it's received a lot of attention from industry. It was a bit surprising that they were able to pull off a bipartisan bill in both chambers. And so I think industry sort of had an immediate reaction to that. Um, but to be frank, I don't see much hope for legislation like this. I mean, it is essentially a Medicare for all and on the retirement side. And there's going to be a lot of... Um, uh, disagreement as to the approach of something like this. I think it even includes some matching funds. I mean, you, you're going to have uh, ideological barriers on both sides uh, kind of fighting on this one. Yeah, they, they, as they say, the devil's always in the details. Jen, this one's kind of, I, I like this one, and I think this one I'd like to put to bed sooner rather than later. Collective investment trusts in 403B plans, basically parity across all the different IRC code sections for retirement plans. 
Yes, this would be great if we could um, really get this into not only the code, which we included in Secure 2.0, um, but also have the SEC language that we need. And that's really the next stage in this. And the House Financial Services Committee has a bill. They've marked it up to create this parity with 401ks. Uh, they will likely have that on the House floor, either in Q1 or early Q2 of this year. Um, there is no companion piece in the Senate, but if there is a deal in, in the realm of possibility between the House Financial Services and the Senate Banking Committee um, before the end of 2024, I think this is very much in play. Jen, I, I have to ask you, this is not legislative, although there has been some review by the Financial Services uh, Subcommittee, I think. I want to ask you about the Department of Labor, for Labor can't get it all out, fiduciary rule. This one's got the industry a buzz. What's the likelihood that we see some final rule? I know they're, they're going through the comment period. They've had hearings. What's the likelihood we get a final rule and what, what could that look like? Yeah, you're right. This is a very controversial issue that we've been dealing with for over a decade now. And it seems the pendulum swings with uh, each different administration, depending on the party. Uh, the letters comment period or the comment period for this this proposed rule ended in early uh, January. I think it was January 2nd. A lot of attention from Congress. Already the hearings are starting. Financial services had theirs. I expect Education and Workforce will have a hearing as well. Um, there is a bipartisan concern around this and some partisan, you know, more consumer groups who are really uh, in favor of it. It is in the interest of the Department of Labor to finalize this rule uh, before summer because they could uh, they could have an, a CRA issue, the Congressional uh, Review Act that could potentially overturn it and they in a, in a new administration. So they want to protect themselves against that. But we could also see litigation in this realm. So I, I think we're still at the first part of the story with regard to this rule. Yeah, I'd heard there, I had heard there were like 19,000 comments received. I don't even know how you have enough people to comb through that. Uh, Jen, last topic, quasi-retirement, but uh, recently uh, the SEC approved a Bitcoin ETF. It's a spot ETF, so it's actually based on the actual uh, Bitcoin. Gives access to a lot to the cryptocurrency by a lot of, for a lot of people. I want to get your reaction to that, and, and could we ever possibly see this ETF in a retirement plan? Oh, so it is very much um, possible for institutional and retail investors uh, and, and the retirement uh, community to start to see these uh, included. It was a very exciting day when the SEC announced that they would allow for these spot Bitcoin ETFs. Um, so yes, I think that we'll see a audience for these um, in the very near future. Yeah, and certainly all uh, indications are there's been a lot of trading uh, in those first few days, first few sessions, a lot of the uh, the Bitcoin spot ETF. So I guess more to come. Jen, it's always great to see you. I, I enjoyed the lightning round. Did you enjoy the lightning round? Yeah, that was great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, so we're going to have you back. We'll do more of that. Jen, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. And we look forward to having you back very soon. Thanks. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest. Someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line and don't forget for all the latest curated news and lifestyle wellness finance tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, then visit our website. We're back again tomorrow with another edition of BRNAM. We'll have some great guests and a great topic, of course. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.